Bing. Bing. Okay, Gordon Bing. Well, hi, everybody. It's David Brooke as uh, part of the David Brooke Michael James experience, for lack of a better word. And uh, certainly on a weekly basis, getting together just to kind of go over what we're working on and um, kind of some topics of the day that we'll talk about from week to week. We'll be doing this uh, pretty much every Monday. So uh, welcome aboard. And uh, Mr. James, I see you're looking sharp. How's everything with you? Doing all right. I, uh, you know, I've been, I kind of had the flu for the last week and a half. And today, you know, I feel like I can kind of show up and uh, we can start this. Mm -hmm. and I'm excited to kind of educate people a little bit. And I thought what we could do on this first episode is let's have you start, David, and just have you kind of talk about who you are and give the one minute kind of, uh, you know, starting pitch, so to speak. Sure, that would be so great. I'll kind of follow and then we'll just kind of start, you know, and then this way people can kind of follow us and get to know who we are and we'll just kind of start this natural progression. So people Excellent, excellent, excellent. I think always too, considering we'll have hopefully some education every uh, episode as well too. So, uh, but thank you, Michael. Well, my name is David Brooke. I call myself the gratitude guy. My primary focus is around speaking and coaching and teaching and writing about the subject of gratitude, hence the name, the gratitude guy. So I feel very blessed to be able to take this message out to a lot of people from very small groups. Uh, I joked once that I went to a rest home once or a nursing home, I guess I would call it senior center. And uh, they didn't advertise I was coming, so it was just one person. So I, I just sat down with them and just talked to one person and said, oh, let me do my spiel for you, about 45 minutes. And then all the way up to uh, a couple of uh, about 10,000 soldiers a couple of times at 10 in the morning and 2 in the afternoon down at Joint Base Lewis-McChord, where Mr. James was in attendance, which I've always appreciated very much to yeah. uh, support me, as well as document in, in the form of video and camera uh, photos and so forth. So it's really about spreading the message, and uh, it's, it's been something that I've always been passionate about, wanting to be a speaker for a long time and eventually getting the subject, which was gratitude, which has helped me through a lot of very, very tough times and uh, helped me to focus on what I have versus what I don't have. So it's really about a message of uh, being grateful and taking it to many people to show them how this too can help you. I'm a huge advocate of not only gratitude, but a gratitude journal. And as I do that and expand my reach, this is just yet another vehicle that I think that you and I have the intention to spread information to people, whether it be from my expertise or yours or both, and uh, to give people something they can turn to and look at on a weekly basis that might help them. So yeah, For that's sure. uh, that's kind of what I do. Yeah. And, you know, real quick, you know, everybody, I met David about seven years ago, and we met down in Linwood, Washington at a speaking event. And uh, it was for Take Shape for Life, which was a weight loss company or is a weight loss company. And they had about 150, maybe 200 business owners, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a couple speakers, myself, and then David followed. And after the speaking event, David came up and grabbed me and said, hey, we need to chat. I need to learn about this social media stuff. Yeah. And so for the last seven years, David and I have kind of you know, worked and talked and met on a consistent basis. And, and David is one of those people that has followed through on the ideas that we come up with. Mm -hmm. And so today, seven years later, David and I are here and we're telling you a little bit about our journey and showing you guys now, seven years in, now we can take what we've learned and now we can speed up this process. Mm -hmm. And this year together around New Year's, you and I kind of made a pact Mm -hmm. And we said, hey, we did. let's team up and let's, you know, put our motivation together and, and let's kind of, uh, let's go out into the world and, and make some deals together. Yeah. And so, you know, myself, Michael James here, I've owned Noggin Branding for the last seven years and it's a web development company. We do websites, SEO and social media for companies. Uh, I've started out like David, where I've been in a speaking environment where there's one, you know, small business owner that shows up and I've been in front of constant contact crowds where there's a couple hundred and, you know, I'm able to close some, some business deals at the end. And uh, we've also done, you know, small business clients all the way up to fortune 500 clients. So I've myself dabbled enough in business to now, I've taken what I've learned and now I'm positioning this new business, the Noggin Network. And that's what I'll be kind of talking about in these upcoming episodes and, and trying to, um, 
I guess, like on paper, visualize what I'm doing for you guys. And then every week or however often David and I chat, I'll be updating you guys on those two businesses and projects. And hopefully you guys will get some nuggets. You'll be able to take some of these ideas and, and little learned mistakes or things that we're doing and hopefully grow your business an idea in a much quicker way. That's great. That's excellent. I, uh, I couldn't agree more. And I think also you're a little modest about Linwood because it was uh, not so much about social media as I see this young man speaking and so I'm walking, I go, I have to meet you. I want to have a cup of coffee with you. What is your name? Are you Michael James? So we have to have coffee. We're going to find out if we got a lot of things in, in symmetry here, which we did and so forth or, or similar. But, uh, but it's, it's, it's excellent what you just said in terms of educating people too. And I think of, for instance, in my world where people that may want to become a speaker is something that a lot of people have a great message. Most people are intimidated by speaking. They say that people would rather run through a mall naked than actually speak in front of a group. I mean, in terms of, and in fact, there was one survey where it's people would rather die than actually be dead instead of speaking in front of a group. So That's something that I'm passionate about for those that want to uh, coach people with another, with an important message that you have uh, writing a book. I've done several books and people that need help from that. We could help educate on that. And then also, the most recent thing I've been really slaving away at, and it's, it does take time, but it'll be very rewarding, is online courses. Mm -hmm. Taking the same information that you have. So for any of you that are listening and either want to become a speaker, write a book, conduct a workshop, uh, do an online course, you have some message of things that you want to take, some expertise, some knowledge that you want to take and, and provide for other people, and then perhaps in the, in the process, make money as well. Uh, we'll certainly be able to share that. And in fact, we were saying that I think with each uh, time we wrap up, we'll be doing this for about a half hour every Monday. When we wrap up, we'll talk about maybe one of our subject du jour for next Monday, just to kind of keep you coming back to hear what we've got next week. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, up, uh, so since New Year's, David, where have you kind of been at with your coaching and consulting business? And what are you kind of, you know, thinking for 2019? And you know, maybe this first quarter of the year for yourself. What do you Well, great question. And, um, and then I think I'll flip it back to you and I answer it because it's really good to understand a concept that I got a little bit away from in 2018. And here we are on February 11th, 2019. And that is I got a little bit away from marketing. And I really found out along the way, whether it's Noggin Branding, whether it's That Gratitude Guy, whether it's ABC Company, I've heard anywhere from 20 to 40, even 50% of your time every day, every week, every hour should be marketing what you do, your goods, your services, your product, and um, whatever you're out there and being passionate about. And so since the first of the year, and it's starting to pay already, I just sort of had a renewed uh, effort towards my marketing. And I think I'll give uh, the folks an example of something that I got away from, and that is doing speeches that I don't charge for. I now charge uh, bigger and bigger fees from when I started, and that's the whole idea is you grow a business, and you become more uh, better known, and you become somebody who's more valuable to that group. But I'd gotten away from the free speeches, if you will, the pro bono speeches, as an example, at Rotary, at Chambers, at Lions, at Kiwanis. And I kind of fell victim to friends of mine who were well-intentioned, but saying things like, you should always be charging a minimum of this, and you should never do for less than that, and so forth. So I thought, yeah, I think I'm getting pretty good now. And I've, got, I've spoken to some very large groups and gotten some very large speaking fees. But I noticed that it got me away from four or five really key elements of what I do, and that is to try out new material to speak on a regular basis, to keep sharp and keep up to date, uh, to sell my books, to meet new people, to get more people that want to sign on to my Monday morning minute. I send out a one minute video every single Monday morning at uh, four in the morning. It's a different topic on gratitude. It's just 60 seconds long. And so I get another 30 or 40 people signed up for that. So the biggest thing uh, to answer the question, Michael, is that it just really got back to the marketing piece and really promoting myself to those service organizations. And I've noticed I've not only gotten a lot more speaking uh, gigs there, but now I've gotten the referrals to bigger speaking gigs where I've been getting paid money for. So it really, I would say if I had to put it in one word, uh, it really was about marketing. These last, uh, I guess it'd be about six weeks from the 1st of January till February 11th, mm -hmm. five, six weeks, is just really getting back to marketing. And, and by that, I mean doing 
20 minutes, a half hour, an hour, every day of something that is marketing what I do. In fact, I've always heard people say it, it's, uh, you're, you're not, you know, selling noggin branding, you're marketing noggin branding. And then the rest happens naturally as you get the business because you marketed it properly. So, so that's yep. kind of been my biggest focus. And then um, how about you since the 1st of January? So for me, it was, uh, it was starting, it was finishing, I guess, a lot of account management and a lot of responsibility with noggin branding, mm -hmm. my first startup business. And now I kind of have that managed and automated. So now I can pivot from that business. And now I'm working this new noggin network, which is a consulting slash referral network that I've started. Mm -hmm. And the exciting thing for me is this year, uh, this business, the noggin network is something that is technically not a model currently in the market. It's something that has came to me personally and I have to go out and prove it in the market this year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, since the first of the year, uh, you might be able to see on the wall right here, mm -hmm. I got a business license, and then right mm -hmm. here today, as of 211, guess what? I got my LLC. Oh, excellent, excellent. So today, uh, you know, from the Washington State uh, Securities, I am now an LLC in the state, and now I can go to uh, some local uh, credit unions and then a couple national banks. Excellent. Uh, set up kind of a commercial and enterprise banking so we can take some larger level deposits, and then I can Excellent. then start those referrals. So I've been waiting legally to do that since, you know, first of the year, and it's, you know, now February 11th. And, you know, so by Monday, the, I'm not sure the date of Monday, but the 18th, uh, that's when I'll be able to start legally taking deposits. And then I can provide, you know, very large referrals in, in return to the network. Mm -hmm. So I've been waiting for that for uh, two years and four months. I actually wow. calculated today. And uh, you know how they say it takes 10,000 hours to be an expert right. or something? If you calculate two years and four months, it's 19,000 hours, 512 hours, something like that. So right. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm putting in the time on this mm -hmm. and I'm doing the research, building the foundation. And now I feel very comfortable and confident to go out and pitch this and take you and uh, everyone that, I, that we come across and, you know, provide a lot of value mm -hmm. and take you, for example, when you were speaking at that rotary or that chamber and there was the one person in the audience, sometimes the one person in the audience can be your best customer. True. Because one person can go and network and be your best marketing department almost. Exactly. You're able to give a more focused conversation, right? You didn't have to stand and do it in front of 5,000. Right. Which, when I was there for that, you moved 5,000 people, mm -hmm. I was like, holy, you know, you really felt that impact. It was really impressive. Yeah, thank you. But imagine the impact with the one woman mm -hmm. where you were to focus with her. Right, exactly. She might, she might be like your best marketing department because she might go tell 15 people after. Yeah. She's like, well, I got, the, I got the full show from David Brooke. He's amazing. Yeah. That gratitude guy rocked my life, right? But yeah, it's, it's oh, no a question. focused approach. No question. And so, like, I know when you and I had talked beginning of the year, I said, you know, if a situation like that does come, David, how could you show up and monetize it for yourself? Right, exactly. You know, even if there is one gal, you might be able to sell five books because you've exactly. written 10, and, right? and you know what's interesting, Michael? You never know who that one gal is. You know, you just, I mean, just, there's all these people out here, male, female, young, old, whatever, you know. Uh, whatever the the type of diverse group it might be, uh, mm -hmm. but it always when you said that that one woman could be the person that could take you to buy the five books to take this to get you to the big speaking gig or whatever. But you could look yeah. out at an audience and you don't know who that person is, and it always reminds me of an experience I had because it, it seems like so many people can illustrate their points so effectively through stories. And I just remember being about eight years old and I was selling magazines door to door. And I had the little uh, thing, a magazine, the subscription thing, and I got some money and you'd pay the person pay $5, get the magazine and so forth. And so my mom says to me, why don't you get somebody to help you? 
and then you can you know cover twice as much ground. And so mm -hmm. I already told you this story. I think I may have oh, told you. I've heard it. this one. I don't it's think. just it's so it just speaks again to this idea that you know it just depends on who it is in the audience, but you don't get to know them ahead of time. So I get this friend of mine, and so I give him a few copies of the magazines, and I give him a few dollars for change, and I said, why don't you go down this side of the street, and I'll go down this side of the street, and we'll see how many we sell. Yeah. And I'm about eight years old back in Spokane, Washington, and so as we're about to go across the street, he goes, well, I'm going to do this for you, but on one condition. And I said, um, okay, what's that? He goes, you have to show me which houses will buy. <laughs> I said, how would I know which houses are by? And he takes the magazine, throws them down on the ground. I'm not going to do it then. And storms <laughs> off. <laughs> I thought, so I don't get to know which house that woman's in that's going to yeah. buy the five journals, but you got to knock on all the doors. You know? yeah. And you just, that's just part of what's going on. You go selling something door to door, you figure it out. But it's, if you do enough, you're going to find those diamonds of the rough. You can flip over the rock to see where the crab is or whatever example you want to use. You got to flip yeah. over a lot of rocks till you find the one that has the crab under it. So totally. it, it really taught me to just keep getting out there and stuff too, and, and really fine tuning. In fact, Speaking of that, speaking of fine tuning and adapting and, and evolving as a business, tell everybody a little bit about how Noggin has evolved from not only websites and SEO and social media, but you've kind of really moved in some other areas that are kind of cool now. And just speak to those for a second about how from when you started six, seven years ago to kind of maybe where you're still doing those things, but maybe where more of your focus is now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, you know, like when I started that seven years ago back in Bellingham, which is north of Seattle where you live, David, mm -hmm. you know, Bellingham's a very small community. There's maybe, you know, 65,000 people when college is in, and we've got a couple kind of large colleges in the area. And so during the year, you know, when school's running, there's a lot more people in the community. Um, but as far as business is concerned, you know, there's there's only so many businesses in certain industries. And, uh, you know, seven years ago, there was really no one doing websites, SEO, and social media. Mm -hmm. And so for me to show up being, I think I was 25 when I started the business, it was uh, literally six months after I graduated college. And I went out with this idea that I wanted to sell that package of this holistic approach of business. And I was thinking, you know, the website is the foundation for everything you're doing. Right. The SEO is the search engine, what you're going to Google and you're going to search and find that website by, mm -hmm. which would be the content on that website. And that's indexing the pages, like titling the pages, keywording, you know, it's, it's creating a story technically on each page. Right. The home page is basically this qualifier that, you know, you have less than a second that your brain is saying, this is what I'm looking for. This is palatable information. It's, it's not like you're going down the Vegas strip and there's like lights and advertising and, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, you know, you want to, you want an experience, right? For the customer. Right. Correct. And, whether they're a balloon artist, uh, a major, you know, consulting corporation or a bank or whatever, what have you, you want it to be palatable. So the whoever's coming, they're able to understand it in moments mm -hmm. and be like, oh, this is, this is what they do. These are the services. This is the value. And then like the website is the qualifier. Okay. Mm -hmm. The SEO is the ranking of that. And then I was using social media back then as like this, the different fishing lines, right? Mm -hmm. Facebook, you know, there's 500 million people back then using it, a billion people, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's 3 billion on there and a billion active a month, right? Wow. Like that's, that's a lot of people still. So in a way, it's not going anywhere. And the audience is, for each of those fishing lines for the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, you know, all this, YouTube for you, mm -hmm. you know, like those are your big fishing lines. Right. Those are your qualifiers as well. Mm -hmm. And so what I was doing back then was setting up a much bigger fishing net for the clients, mm. whether they knew it or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where a lot of my competitors, they were just doing website construction they right. were just offering 
search engine optimization packages. They were, some people were just doing social media. I was trying to offer all three. Right. And so back then, that's what I was thinking. Over the seven years, what I was able to do is step back in the industry and go, what's going on? What's maybe the next couple of years look like for me? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm at a point where I'm like, I'm making this, I'm doing pretty well. But do I want to like, if I want to explode to make what I really want to make, <laughs> that's a big ladder, man. There's a lot of steps. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how do I position and leverage what I've been doing? Mm-hmm. To hopefully create something to get ahead right. and build a bigger agency so right. I can help more people. Right. Like the entire point of my business was to help small businesses and medium businesses mm-hmm. gain clients and be more visible and sell more products, mm-hmm. whether that's a retail or through their websites and social media. What I'm doing now is I've stepped back and I've reached out to my competitors even. Mm-hmm. And now what I'm doing is I'm able to leverage them mm-hmm. and say, hey, do you want to partner with me and my referral network, which is now the Noggin Network, right? Right. And that's what I'm doing this year is I'm able to go to a competitor and I'm able to say, you can make more money from me if you become a referral partner. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. And then I reach out to like my friend David Brooke right here, which we're chatting to, and he owns this amazing consulting firm. Mm-hmm. And I say to David, hey, David, you've been doing this for 20 years. You're qualified. You're obviously a pro. You got the books. How, how do we start getting you more business and referrals, right? right. The marketing aspect of your business mm-hmm. without the huge upfront cost of noggin branding, websites and SEO and social media, mm-hmm. right? thousands mm-hmm. of dollars potentially a month to grow your business mm-hmm. to gain these big clients right right so how do i get someone like a consultant to be a consulting partner mm-hmm. and then catch referrals right right so then what i'm doing is taking a consulting firm and i'm then going to like a bank an insurance company a balloon artist anybody with clients mm-hmm. And I'm turning them into the referral partner. Right. And they're able to provide referrals to you, the consulting firm. The consulting firm gets paid whatever you charge. Mm -hmm. And you knowing that whatever your business does right now, let's just say you do a million dollars a year to keep the numbers easy. Mm -hmm. Right now, let's say you partner with me and become a consulting partner. Mm -hmm. Let's say I bring you another half a million or another million this year. Right in referrals right and you don't have to do much Mm -hmm. other than like every month pick up the phone and and work with these pre-qualified clients coming from our referral partners these insurance agents these bank these balloon artists right well and you know i think that's particularly appropriate right now is because i just mentioned earlier about marketing 20 to 40 percent sometimes maybe 50 percent of your day hour what have you is to spend on marketing your business or service your product or service You think back about like direct mail marketing and if you got a 1% or a 2% return or something like this, it was uh, considered really good. And then you got social media. Well, Now, social media has had its day in the sun. Direct email marketing has gotten a a lot tougher. The numbers have gone really down on that because you've got people with spam. They're going through, they're getting so much email, they just delete everything. So really the referral-like based marketing is not only more targeted, but I think it's probably a lot more effective in this day and age. It helps qualify people in a much more professional manner Mm -hmm. without you having to work, say like David Brooke every day for an hour, you call 10 potential clients, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to open up the yellow pages, so to speak, right? go on Facebook, go on LinkedIn, Mm -hmm. and you need to research 10 businesses a day for an hour and you, that's how you do sales, right? Yep. What if for an hour a day, you did that like normal Mm -hmm. and then another hour of the day you're getting a bunch of leads from the noggin network Mm -hmm. exactly exactly these are pretty much pre-qualified from the people sending them because of they know that you're the consulting partner well and i know what you want and i think sorry i think the pre-qualified part is really key too it's like warm leads versus cold leads and everybody knows a warm or a hot lead is much better than a cold thing or a cold call but I think back to what I said about marketing my business more by doing all these talks. 
those people that have just seen me talk for a half hour are pre-qualified. They've seen the product. They've seen the service. They've seen really? the actual piece of, of, of uh, knowledge in action. I want you to speak to my group. I want you. I had one of the ones last week where uh, I wanted, she wants me to coach her husband. And she says, he needs help. He's having some struggles right now and so forth. And so can you coach him? And it was just right from just having seen it. So talk wow. about pre-qualifying. There's nothing, yeah. and I think anything with marketing, the more targeted you get, obviously the more effective it is, the bigger bang for the buck, better ROI, the whole deal. So that's, that's really cool how that's working for you. Yeah, so that's what I'll be able to kind of show, you know, as we go along this year. And, you know, I'm going to come down to Seattle and you and I'll be doing some work together and we'll video, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with our phones and GoPros, you know, whatever. Exactly. And we'll actually build, you know, real life scenarios for people. Mm -hmm. And we'll be putting that on our social media to show people. So, And then one of, those, one of those subjects will be you as my special guest, but this time just you, nobody else that'll be causing me any inter, inter, not that there's anything wrong with that but any interference on the side i just want the michael james yeah. as, as the special guest video and so for yeah. one of the things that we'll be doing i just actually kind of made a note to myself as i uh, put podcast uh subjects and uh just kind of what we'll talk about each week because i really think it'll be important for us to always provide like to the person that may be watching this how can the referral marketing help your business? How can some of these new types of things that you're doing with Noggin apply to them so they too can take this and apply it to their business so they get a better, uh, again, ROI? So it'll be fun to kind of have, uh, in fact, as I think about it, and, and we're going to try to keep these to about a half hour. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually probably wrap up in a couple of minutes. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts kind of maybe for a topic or subject du jour for uh, next Monday that we can... Uh, uh, leave them uh, teased with for next week? Yeah, I was thinking, you know, for, for next week, I was going to talk about, you know, uh, the process of doing the business license mm, and then okay. LLCing that business so you can protect yourself and assets as you build the business. Right. And say, you know, something happens down the road and a client wants to sue you or, you know, whatever, you know, I'll explain some scenarios and, okay. you know, give some real life instances. And, uh, and then we'll talk about, you know, how to set up banking for a small business. Oh, okay. Excellent. And, uh, you know, working like, do you want to work with, um, you know, credit unions? Do you want to work with like a U.S. bank, uh, you know, a key bank, you know, someone larger Wells Fargo for like, you know, larger business depending. So I'll kind of talk about some things like that. And then, you know, just, uh, you know, some basic, uh, you know, kind of startup marketing things or something. Excellent. And then we'll have, as I put just some notes here, process of business license, LLC, legalities, set up banking for small businesses and so forth. So that'll be our next week's subject. And then hopefully we'll have enough that'll uh, kind of cover a wide range of the solopreneur, entrepreneur, the person, some of the things that can really help them be more successful in their business. Because I think ultimately uh, that's really our goal is to share our knowledge and to spread mm -hmm. it to other people. And I know that, uh, I, I often mention this in my talks about if you want to help yourself, help other people. And totally. anytime you can pass it on to other people, I think it's certainly uh, uh, something that just gives you a great feeling inside. So, yeah. um, all right. Well, any other little um, uh, tidbits for the group, uh, for the listeners, the viewers, what have you, as we wrap up? Yeah. I mean, you know, this is like our attempt, yours and mine attempt to, as a team now, like in a way where we're taking our process and we're making it visible for others. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in a way it's going to, you know, for us show each week and month progress and what we've done or accomplished or not. And it'll show successes and failures and, you know, it'll give us ways to look back and go, Oh, this would fix that in the future. Or the audience will chime in and be like, Hey, don't do that. Dummy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Gonna cause that, so um, you know we'll we'll hopefully start building an audience over time and have some fun with it. And um, I'm sure like every day we'll drop some nuggets and uh, have some fun with it for people. Well said, well said. And I think the, uh, the word that comes to mind as you were saying that to uh, the viewers is authenticity. And I think one of the little uh, exercises I do in my talks is the little card that's called the UR card, and it's how David sees Michael and it's how Michael sees David. And there's something about this exercise that I love so much because 
Why is it that other people always see you in this incredible light and it seems like 10 times better than you see yourself? And that is just how we're sort of programmed, especially people that are drivers and people that want to make a difference. And, and sometimes they go, oh, that wasn't a very good talk that I just gave, gave in the person. Oh, God, that was incredible. I learned so much from it. So even by being authentic and transparent, I think that'll help people see whether it's Michael James or David Brook. There's always things we want to get better at. We're lifelong learners. There's the know-it-alls of the world, which we don't want to be around. And there's the lifelong learners. And so as we continue to learn from each other and uh, express this to everybody else, it'll just be one more thing that uh, people can maybe take away that uh, gives them some food for thought. So for sure. sounds good. So we will uh, chat and uh, I will chat with you next week. And thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for your time, David. It's fun hanging out. Let's have some, uh, let's have some fun next week. We all do. We'll do. Thanks everybody.